Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this is going to be kind of quick because we need to explain something to you because many of you are not going to get this and many of you are going to take the contract and you're going to try to amend it and add junk to it and think that you know what you're doing and, you know, and then some of you are going to be asking the question of how can you do this and how can you do that and you can't do this and you can't do that. So we're going to take care of some things. You see this right here, obligation of contracts. It says no state shall enter into a treaty, alliance, or confederation. Okay, this is why you send your contract to all of the agencies necessary. Nor can they make a law impairing the obligation of contract. Now, what they have done over the years is that they have defined what impairing the obligation of contract means. So let me give you a particular case where the Supreme Court has made such determinations and rulings. Give me a second. As a matter of fact, let's do this. This is the easiest way to do it. That's the one I'm looking for. Okay. But it is said that the members had formed a contract between themselves, which would be dissolved by the stoppage of their business. And then what? Or, and what then? is that such a violation of contract as is prohibited by the Constitution of the United States considered to what such a construction would lead. Let us suppose that in one of the states there is no law against gaming, cockfighting, horse racing, or public masquerades, and that companies should be formed for the purpose of carrying out these practices by way of contract. Would the legislature then be powerless to prohibit them? The answer returned, of course, is, was no. Now, here is the point. See, basically what they're saying is we can't create a contract that would overstep the laws of the state. That would be, uh, how would you say, that would not be in the spirit of giving government the power and authority to do certain things. So notice what they say next. The prevailing doctrine was stated by the United States Supreme Court. It is the settled law of this court. See, law of the court. See, they made law. That the interdiction of statutes impairing the obligation of contract does not prevent the state from exercising such powers, policing powers, that are vested in it by the promotion of the commonwealth, or are necessary for the general good of the public, public welfare. Though contracts previously entered into between individuals, private contracts, may thereby be affected. In other words, that parties by entering into contracts may not stop the legislature from enacting laws intended for the public good. Exactly what I just said. This is where we take the sledgehammer and we keep pounding them right in the forehead until they understand. Ladies and gentlemen, if you read the contract, it already highlights the fact that their laws were enacted without the authority. And so their laws, as they have agreed by the contract, do not have any bearing. You see, that's the unique thing. They have already agreed, if you read the contract, that their laws were not enacted with the proper enacting clause were not enacted by the proper legislative procedure are invalid. That's the issue. Now, let's see if we can find out one more thing. So, in an early case, we find a state recording act upheld as applying to deeds dated before the passage of the act. Later cases have brought the policing power in its more customary phrase, phase, excuse me, into contract with private as well as public contract. Lottery tickets, valid when issued, were necessarily invalidated by legislation prohibiting the lottery business. Contracts for the sale of beer, valid when entered into, were similarly nullified by the state prohibition law, and contracts of employment were modified by later laws regarding the liability of employers and workmen's comp. Likewise, a contract between the plaintiff and the defendant did not prevent the state from making a latter 
the latter a concession that rendered the contract worthless, nor did a contract as a rate between two railway companies prevent the state from imposing different rates, nor did the contract between a public utility company and a customer protect the rates agreed upon from being superseded by their fix, those fixed by the state. Similarly, a contract for the conveyance of water beyond the limits of a state did not prevent the state from prohibiting such conveyance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the first thing they're going to say that they have the right to impede your obligation of contract however your contract is with the state with the state legislature how do we know this because any contract with the state because the let's say the court and who else would it be or any state agency does not have the right to enter into a contract with another on behalf of the state that's only the legislature as by the United States Constitution how do we know this let's go ahead and let you know and then we'll show you the method to the madness of what these gentlemen did who brought that original contract before Congress to have their private law enacted gotta get to the top so sorry there we go obligation of contract we are here Pay attention. No state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation. Or, pay attention, it says, where is I'm looking, or, we don't want anything. We won't make any. Because you notice how anything is separate? Okay? So, it's not make anything. <laughs> okay? But it's, make any law impairing the obligation of contract so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of the junk in the middle and statutory interpretation allows us to do this I know a lot of people don't understand <coughs> excuse me <coughs> a lot of people I'm sorry ladies and gentlemen it's 3 40 in the morning and so I am not at the habit of talking at 3.40 in the morning, so I have to do the let me clear my throat thing. So no state shall enter into any treaty or alliance or confederation. We'll do all three. Make any law, and we can put the or here. Okay, or make any law impairing the obligation of contract. That's the first thing. Now, I want you to make sure you understand something. <clears throat> the First Amendment of the United States Constitution says Congress shall make no law. So, that right there says that only Congress can make the law. Now, what the courts have said, that, eh, accordingly, the courts have frequently said that the clause does not cover judicial decisions. Uh, judicial decisions are not law. Okay? So... Pay attention, this is the understanding. The contract law provides that no state may pass a law impairing the obligation of contracts, or a law, in this context, may be a statute, constitutional provision, municipal ordinance, or administrative regulation, having the force or operation of a statute, but are judicial decisions within this clause? Of course they are, because they're part of the state. The abstract principle of the separation of powers, at least until recently, forbid the idea that the courts make law, or the word pass in the above clause seems to confine it to the formal and acknowledged method of exercising the law making function, i.e. Congress. Accordingly, the courts has frequently said that the law does not cover judicial decisions, however erroneous and whatever their effect on existing contract rights nevertheless there are important exceptions to this rule that are set forth below what I am trying to make sure all of you understand we have covered this in the contract which is why Congress sent it to their judicial committee the judicial committee of the United States Congress had determined that the contract is a binding agreement 
between a government agency, in that case the Attorney General, and the other parties, and that there were no defenses that they could come up with. So now we take that and we place it in here so that everybody understands. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is I'm leading the way with this and explaining this to all of you. There are going to be many people out there who are going to try to interpret, who are going to try to explain, who are going to say you can't do this, you can't do that. People, I started out with contract law. That's why before reading any of this, I can tell you what it means and then I can read it to you. I'm just copying and pasting. As you saw, I'm editing it down. Why? And how can I do this? Because when we look at things like the key maker for the matrix, he said he was meant to do just that. To provide the key for the door for Neil to enter. He said that was his purpose. And after he served his purpose, he was no more. Now, I'm not saying that's the case with me. I have more than just this as my purpose. But it was meant for me, out of all the people on this planet, to highlight and bring these points to your attention. It was meant for those individuals. And when I say meant, I'm not talking about predestination. Okay, let's just talk about it was just meant for those individuals to bring forth their claim before Congress and it was meant for Congress to acknowledge their claim and then it was meant for them to bring it to one person's attention they didn't bring it to anyone else's attention they brought it to my attention all the people on this planet they found me and what did I do I took it and I made it mine and now I am willing to stake everything I believe everything I know everything I understand on this process now again what I said people are gonna take that contract they're gonna throw junk in it one person I had already received at least four emails with people telling me well shouldn't we add this and shouldn't we add that <sighs> we have people who know nothing about contract who know nothing about nothing who are watching my videos why because they are coming there to get information I'm not watching their videos to get information and they're telling me what we should and should not add and I find that to be offensive so those of you who want to be ignorant thinking you know more about something because you've done a little bit of research you knock yourself out you see, unlike you, let me explain to you what I did here by going to the website and pulling up these annotations. Let me show you this uh, case law here. You see this right here, 1901, 1905, 1904, 1873, 1866, 1865. Do you see these? These are the cases that the courts are relying on for contract. These are the very same cases I'm going to use to kill their contract. Like I said, I'm copying and pasting their own junk that's what I'm doing why why am I doing this because it is absolutely necessary that you use your opponents weapons against them that you use your enemies weapons against them that you use your enemies strengths against them so like I said there are gonna be people who are gonna to want to change and who are gonna to want to add for whatever stupid reason because they think that we have somehow missed something that we have somehow forgot something like I said offensive we are not trying to create a new government with these contracts because we can't the law prohibits that Congress cannot create a new government because guess what even if we had the full approval of Congress let me show you something no state shall enter into any treaty well, this state is inclusive of all three branches. But the state can't enter into a contract with you, a private contract that involves you, that does not affect the public. Well, notice your contract doesn't affect the public. It only affects you and or the other parties associated with you. We can do that. That's legal. Now, here's what the courts do. The courts just open their mouths. They don't explain anything why don't they explain anything why is it that they don't answer questions 
because they're prohibited from asking, answering questions. You see, they have stuff like this that they rely on. It's already been determined. It's already been decided. No, it hasn't. This has never been decided before. Nobody's ever brought such a question, nor has anybody brought such an issue. And if you want to talk about it being decided, Congress just made this decision. And then you show them what Congress decided. Okay, well, I want to thank all of you for taking the time. Like I said, this was going to be short. And this was just letting you know that the contract, when they bring forth that argument, here's your understanding that, sorry, this contract is with the state. It does not impair the obligation of the state to make laws. It does not impair the obligation of the state to enact law. Here is the problem with the laws of the state. They have not been enacted by a proper Congress. Congress suspended government in 1933. Once they suspended government, and they did so by unconstitutional means, then all of their laws since then have no validity at law. Because when they suspended government, they impaired the obligation of contract, which they were prohibited from doing so. That's your understanding. That's the explanation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I wasn't trying to make this long. I was just trying to bring this information to your attention. And since I have, say have a good day, have a good night, have a good life. And as always, whatever it is that you do have, make it good. Goodbye.